Hey there, it's time for the show The Tatiana Show Where you make friends and talk life and crypto Salt offers cash loans collateralized by Bitcoin and other cryptos. There are no income checks, no credit checks, and no origination fees. Salt offers comprehensive insurance for your collateral assets and locks them in deep cold storage with a robust multi-sig process for the duration of your loan. With Salt's online platform or mobile app, track your loan or make deposits and payments on the go. Pay back as much as you want whenever you want and wrap up your loan at any time with no prepayment penalties. Once your loan has been paid back, your assets are returned to you. Visit saltlending.com slash Tatiana to sign up for an account and start exploring your options today. Saltlending.com slash Tatiana. This episode of the Tatiana Show is brought to you by Voltoro. Voltoro is a gold hedging solution for the crypto community. One of the challenges of investing in cryptocurrencies is dealing with volatility. Keeping a diversified portfolio is a key to healthy returns. I keep about 10% of my crypto assets in gold using Voltoro. Voltoro allows me to open a gold wallet in seconds where I can easily trade with cryptos and gold. What I like about using Voltoro instead of Tether is that the gold in my Voltoro wallet is insured, audited, vaulted in Switzerland, and unlike fiat money, Gold has increased in value for the last 20 years. Visit voltoro.gold slash Tatiana today and get zero trading fees for the first three months. That is vault, like a gold vault, and oro, which is Spanish for gold. Voltoro, ole! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tatiana Show. Today, I sound very raspy because I'm on day three of a fast. The only thing I have left to my life is virtue signaling because I have no candy or any calories whatsoever. I'm joined today by my co-host, Josh Agala of Voltoro, launching a 2.0 as we speak. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Oh, my God, Tatiana. Get, get this girl some candy, somebody. That's, I think uh, they that's... should have avocado, actually. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not candy, but I would like candy more. Yeah, probably. all right. Yeah, no, you're right. Some avocado, something. Oh, my God. So, yeah, well, yeah, we've just launched, we're launching Voltoro 2. It's a very fun but stressful you know trying to get all the data across and this and that oh my god it's so complex but it's a joy and we've we've launched and um uh, we're just doing the beta last beta testing now with the initial beta testers so yay 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 yeah you're getting some press about that i retweeted something you have the voltoro account now you have your also your josh Chagala account which for some reason depressed me but yeah you've got even some coverage in um in spanish which was pretty cool yeah, yeah. Well, I had to change to Jay Shigala because uh, my my you know my personal opinion is sometimes rather extreme, uh, or you know, and and uh, we wanted to have the official Voltoro account be a little bit more. I wish I was hanging out with you, but I'm not. But who we are hanging out with right now is Connie Gallippi, uh, one of my very first friends that I've made in the crypto space. I think we met down in Buenos Aires or perhaps down in Atlanta. I'm not even sure. Uh, Connie Gallippi is the founder of BitGive, and she's also the executive director there. We've had her on the show a lot of times. She's the original uh, Bitcoin charity for sure, and she's done a lot of really amazing projects over the years. Uh, BitGive has been around uh, forever, and recently we had um, Lucas from Lend a Hand Bahamas come on and talk about the damage uh, it, that Hurricane Dorian did. So he was talking about how BitGive and the, them partnered together. So if people are interested in what's going on with BitGive in the Bahamas, they can listen to that old episode. But today we're going to get an update about all the different things that BitGive and GiveTrack are doing. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us today on the show, Connie. Thanks. I'm happy to be here again. It's always fun. Awesome. When was the last time we got to talk? I think it was uh, maybe six months ago or something like that, right, Connie? Probably at least, yeah. It might have been when we launched the the platform in its version one, which was late last year. Yeah. So the, for those folks that don't know, Connie, uh, you know, she, like like Tatiana said, she was the original um, bombastic uh, lady of giving in the uh, Bitcoin space and the crypto space in general, and um, and uh, really built so many amazing connections uh, to do with charity and Bitcoin. And when we think of money, when we think of currency, uh, one really important part of that is giving, of course, and receiving uh, when you need it. And 
So one of the biggest holes, I think, in charity is the transparency in charity because a lot of people go, oh, I don't, I don't like to give to them because I don't know what they do with my money. And of course, the blockchain allows us to really track that stuff. And I'm just super impressed. I'm always impressed with what Connie, Connie comes up with and, uh, and the projects that she works on um, in that field because I think it is a really important field. So w- what have you been up to since the last six months? Well, thank you. First of all, I really appreciate your your kind words and the lovely intro, Tatiana. So we like we've been really busy. So we we launched the platform in its version one in late December last year, and we've been running a number of projects on the platform. We've had I think three that have closed now and are under implementation. So we're pretty excited about that. We're waiting for some updates on those. One is in Afghanistan with Code to Inspire. We're pretty excited to hear about that. They um, raised funds for new computers for their coding school for girls in Herat. And um, we have two that are down in Chile um, with Desafio and America Solidaria, and they're both getting ready to share some updates. Um, we actually just got a few updates from Desafio earlier this week on how they're doing. Um, and we have a bunch of projects that are funding now. So um, we've got a lot going on on the platform, which is pretty exciting. And uh, well, we're just- And the platform, how do people find the platform? What is it again? It's givetrack.org. Criv, triv, uh, givetrack.org for those uh, people. If you're listening right now, go there right now while you're listening to this because that way you can uh, really know what we're talking about. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So the, the projects that we have live right now are in uh, Venezuela, Ethiopia, uh, the Bahamas, which um, Tatiana mentioned, and we have our newest one now is in Jamaica. Fantastic. And, um, you know, one thing that we've noticed as, as an exchange um, at Voltoro.com, we, we noticed that when the times are good in Bitcoin, when the, when the bull's running through the streets, when everyone's frantically dodging those bulls, um, uh, you know, times are good. Money's flying. It's raining. Uh, and, and people are happy to spend and hedge. Uh, in our case, they're hedging in gold. Do you find that, uh, that, that it's kind of dried up in, in, those, in the bear markets when the bear comes along with his sour face? Is that, is that the same for you or, or is, is it a, a quite a flat line that people just generally give when they want to, um, uh, or like consistently or, or does it follow that bear bull cycle? Um, I guess generally it does follow the, the cycle, uh, but it's not always um, consistent with that. Um, so, you know, when we saw the really big spike in late 2017, early 25th, or 2018, we did see some really big donations coming in. Um, I think that was also, you know, a very opportunistic time at the end of the year to quickly get some offsets. Um, whenever, you know, the people who are tuned into capital gains, mm. uh, you know, quickly acted because it had to be, you know, you have to make those contributions before the end of the tax year. So we saw some of that. Um, and in the past, when the market has spiked, we've, we've seen a lot more activity as well, um, just in general. But we do have, you know, a lot of just really stable supporters that are always coming to us with support in one fashion or another, regardless of the market. Um, and of course, that's what we need more of, right? <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's I mean I understand the market does have a huge, you know, impact on everyone um as well. So we we do understand that. But what we think, I mean, we feel like in this industry even now, you know, 10 years plus in, there's so few real use cases for the technology itself and um we really would like you know, folks to see that we're really demonstrating a use case with the tech. And even if they only can give like a couple of Satoshis, it's, it shows us support regardless of the market to actually use the platform and help show, you know, a real use case, a demonstration of the use case of the tech 
as well as one that's really appealing and um, relatable to the public, to the mainstream, and not just the cryptocurrency industry. Now, I just want to backtrack a little bit because you said something very interesting before. And I think this is something that uh, if, if people are not in it just to help someone for that feel good uh, feeling inside themselves of giving for like, you know, that if they're not just, they wouldn't do it for that. Maybe they would do it for that tax, right? Uh, you know, that write off. So I'd be, I'd be interested to explore that just quickly uh, before we move forward. Um, how, how are the people do that and what's it for how do people save money in their taxes by giving and helping people in charities so yeah so we um we actually received our 501c3 status which is the tax exempt status in the u.s uh, back in 2014 so we've offered this uh, benefit for a long time and essentially what it is is that not only are we tax exempt as an organization ourselves so we don't have to pay capital gains on our Bitcoin holdings. And we do hold the majority of our assets in Bitcoin. Um, but also, we offer a tax write-off to any US taxpayer. So it, it can work like a typical write-off. Like if you make a donation, you can include that in your taxes and write it off from your income level. Um, but you also, with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, can use it as an offset to capital gains, which is actually, I think, quite beautiful in how it works because you can make the contribution in cryptocurrency, not you know converting it or anything, and offset any gains that you may have that are tax taxable. Um, so it, it takes a little bit of calculating, but it's a really great way to um, you know, give back, but also benefit as a taxpayer from not necessarily having to make that con that tax payment to the government, right? So it's like you well, get that, to support charity instead of paying the, the tax man. Well, that's amazing because the biggest issue people have is like, oh, I don't want to pay taxes because I don't like the way the government spends the money. Well, now you can give to Big Give and actually choose where your money goes. Exactly. Especially with gift track. I mean, we have two things, you know, one is just supporting BitGive. Um, and the other is the different projects on gift track, um, which are kind of all over the world. So depending on where those charities are located, um, they can offer the same tax benefit to citizens of their countries. Um, some of the charities we have are in the US and, and they're also 501c3s but others are, are located um, in different countries like um, Canada, um, Jamaica, um, the Bahamas and, and such. So it's, yeah, so it's really interesting. Yeah. Amazing. Did, um, did, did you, uh, I'd like to go into the track side of the, 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 the um, give track because for me, that's, that's one of the most interesting things that I've seen in charity space for a very, very long time. Yes. Yeah. So it's, uh, you mean like basically tracking the contributions on the blockchain? Uh, yeah. 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 So it's uh, definitely the most, I think, innovative, forward thinking um, technology uh, in, in play right now in the philanthropic sector. <laughs> Um, and it's really exciting. Uh, it's been it's been also quite challenging to implement in the real world because, as you can imagine, you know NGOs that are doing work on the ground in different places of the world. Um, this is all very new to them and very, mm. you know, hard to to figure out. <laughs> um, but there's also the challenge of you know not really being able to use cryptocurrency on the ground. Yeah. So, you know, one of the biggest things that I would love to see is, is us, you know, as an industry build out um, the ecosystem in such a way that, you know, we can see the true beauty of what's possible. Um, because uh, you can, you know, track everything on the blockchain. So what we have right now is a platform that allows donors to come in in actually now 50 different currencies. 
um, because we have an integration with Uphold and they offer um, an automated conversion of any, uh, this probably I think 23 fiat currencies and 25 cryptocurrencies or something like that, um, that they automatically convert to Bitcoin and send to our charity wallets. So it can come in in, in any form, it's then converted into Bitcoin and sent to the charity's wallet so it can all be in one currency and be tracked on the blockchain going forward. Um, so, and then we have in the system um, a way to visualize the movement of the funds when there's a movement on the blockchain and for the charities to explain what those movements and payments are uh, in expense reports that they submit to um, the platform to explain what's happening with, you know, what, what all that blockchain data really means. Um, so it's, 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 you know, it's, it's been a, a journey getting all that going and working with mainstream charities on that, but it's, it's happening, which is fun and we're learning a lot. So. Yes. Yeah, speaking to some of the challenges, um, you know, getting things going, you've been doing this for a very long time. And as we all know, there's a lot of ups and downs in the crypto space. Besides the the money part of it, I think it really requires a lot of personal uh, strength, which you've demonstrated quite clearly. I'm wondering what it is that keeps you going, or is there something that inspires you with this vision that makes it worthwhile? And I know that some days for everybody, it's not worthwhile, but on the days that it is, what do you think it is that's driving you? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, it is, it is very challenging. Um, and you've, you've known me through the whole entire process. Um, I mean, I think we met just a few months after we started BitGive. So, um, you know, a lot of the ups and downs. And yeah, I think, I mean, for me, I'm really passionate about what the potential is. And, it's, and I know that the technology can do that today. You know, so it's an interesting, you know, segue from what we were just talking about is that it is possible today and it was possible six years ago to send anyone in the world Bitcoin or now there's all these other cryptocurrencies directly in almost instantaneously. It doesn't matter where they are. It gets there within minutes. It costs a lot less in transaction time. And you know that it got to the person you intended it to because of the private keys. So, you know, that really initially that blew my mind that we could access people in the most remote places in the world that have the most need um, with resources directly. Um, so that's really what initially, you know, got me super excited about the tech itself. And as time went on, um, you know, we looked into the transparency aspects as well, and I really see a whole, you know, huge future for that as far as not just showing what happens with the funds, which is a, a tremendous improvement from what we have today in the traditional um, philanthropic sector, um, but there's so much to be gained from having that data in real time. So there's the accountability aspect, which helps a lot with rebuilding trust in, in charities and um, supporting the charities that are willing to be transparent and getting the funding to the groups that you know, are doing good work on the ground and can prove and show that through this technology. Um, but there's so much more to you know, analyzing that data and, and being able to do that in real time to see, you know, where did it go? How much was used for different things? Where's the money coming from? Is, are there trends? Um, you know, are there gaps in how we're funding efforts around the world? Are there uh, duplication of efforts? Is there, you know, like when there's disaster relief, sometimes there's you know, everybody sends water and they actually need food or vice versa, you know, but until that information can get back out to the world, the water keeps coming, <laughs> you know? So right. if you have like real-time feedback and real-time data, you can improve efficiencies and effectiveness of 
philanthropy work on the ground, in addition to improving how fast it gets there, how much more money gets there, and confirming that the recipient was who you intended it to be. So the, the ultimate, you know, potential and opportunity with this technology is what really keeps me going. And I have to kind of reel myself in sometimes and understand that we're way ahead since we started so early on this. Um, and there's, there's probably a long way to go um, to, to actually reach that true vision in, in, in the real world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th I mean, I think uh, what you're doing is really taking that and accelerating that transformation much faster than it was in the past. I mean, for the past, God knows, 100 years, it's really hasn't changed much. I guess the internet has changed it a little bit, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's funny because the nonprofit sector, you know, because they're always kind of struggling with resources, they're always behind on all of these kinds of things. So they're still catching up, a lot of them, on just how to engage donors online and how to do digital giving. Um, they're starting to get, you know, used to that, but, um, you know, they st I still get letters in the mail. I'm sure you guys do too, like, you know, physical letters from charities asking for you to write a check and put it back in the mail to them. So there's still kind of <laughs> a long way to go, yeah. even for the things, yeah. And scams and charity scams, so many of them. Yeah, there's a lot more coming out. I mean, it, it's interesting how there wasn't really a lot of knowledge of that in the past, and I'm sure it was going on. It just wasn't known. Hmm. Uh, and the well, more we dig, the more we find, which is really unfortunate. Well, that brings me to another question. How do you choose your charities? Uh, and do you think that the crypto community, which is probably the predominant sponsor of these activities, do they like certain charities better than the other? That's a good question. Yeah, so, well, in the very beginning, um, when we first established BitGive, um, we decided to focus on public health and environmental issues. Um, we defined those kind of large categories very broadly because we didn't want to be too pigeonholed. Um, at the same time, we wanted to have some focus and back then, and I guess you could argue still now, uh, Bitcoin was quite controversial in and of itself. And so we tried to keep the, you know, adding additional controversies um, to, a, lim to a, a limit. So we, we tried to keep it in areas where we thought were pretty generally supportive, uh, regardless of, you know, politics and all those kinds of things. Um, so we have those two broader categories, and then within those, we do we try to find um, things that we think will be of interest not only to the crypto community but to the mainstream audience because um, we are trying to you know use this particular use case of the tech to reach a mainstream audience and show them what what can be done with it and what's possible to try to help you know grow adoption. Um, it's not at all part of our mission um, because that as a nonprofit, a charitable organization, we can't really, you know, make that our mission, but in essence, by what we do, it is, you know, in theory, uh, could, could really help with outreach and education and adoption of the tech itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you'll see on our platform, like we do have pretty wide ranging um, things from, you know, what's going on in Venezuela, is very unfortunate um, to things like skate parks in Jamaica, you know, and um, water in Ethiopia. Um, so very, I think, pretty wide, wide ranging, even though we try to focus on those, those kind of general areas. Yeah, one of the questions that um, comes to mind is uh, talking of all the wide ranging areas, how do you, how do you choose what you want to uh, support on the platform? Well, um, it depends, you know, in the past, we, we tried to be very um, strategic uh, because we didn't have the platform at the time and we were even smaller 
as a team and resources than we are today. So we tried to establish a global um, reach. And so we, you know, very intentionally looked for things in different parts of the world. Um, we also have, you know, standards within which we uh, require the NGOs to meet. So now those are built into the onboarding process of GiveTrack itself. Um, but we used to manually, um, you know, look for and vet the NGOs. And even now with GiveTrack, NGOs that are outside of the U.S. still require quite a bit of uh, manual vetting. But within the U.S., we have um, an API with GuideStar that will tell us pretty quickly if the NGO has a C3 status, if it's up to date and current, and if they're in compliance with the regulations. So that helps a lot. Um, but we still do our own sleuthing <laughs> to yeah. make sure, you know, because we really have to be quite thorough in how we vet the organizations that we work with um, because, um, you know, it really could backfire on us. Mm. Um, not only do we not want to participate in, you know, something that isn't legit, um, nor do we want our donors and our audience to get involved in something that isn't, you know, very legitimate and, and pure. We don't want it to backfire on us either from a regulatory standpoint, um, as well as all the hard work we've put into building BitGive and the strong brand that we have. So, it's a very, we're very serious about it. Um, and oftentimes it takes quite a while. Um, we, we were really lucky. I was so, so proud of the team um, to turn around the Bahamas campaign really quickly because um, obviously it's a relief effort and we hadn't started ahead of time looking for a group in the Bahamas to, you know, start the process ahead of time. Um, so, you know, once we had, um, they came to us through a, a contact of ours. We had to quickly get um, everything together and the vetting process had to be done um, on the fast track to try to capture, you know, that initial excitement around helping um, with relief efforts in the Bahamas. You know, Connie, I really loved the Kenya video and I thought that that was such a powerful way of educating people uh, with the power of uh, Bitcoin. Is there, are there any plans to do any other kind of content like that? Well, we, we always think about it and would love to. The, the unfortunate thing is it costs a fortune. Um, so, you know, we, when we did that piece in Kenya, um, we were really lucky to have um, not only the expenses significantly reduced through our partner, um, the Water Project, but we also had the, the reduced expenses sponsored, mostly by BitPesa, um, because otherwise we're spending, you know, donor funds to travel to wherever these projects are and then have a film crew there as well. Um, so you're paying their travel, lodging, time for their, you know, skills in, in producing the film, editing, all of that. Um, so it costs a lot of money. Um, so, you know, that we do have another video that we did with um, Forgive Track, and that was actually done pro bono. Um, so, uh, you know, we're really, really lucky that we've had that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's definitely a huge um, expense, and we need to, you know, be strategic about what, what project we choose to, to do and put that investment in. How can people help? support BitGive if they don't have money? Like what else can they do in order to promote it? I know that you guys have the Smile program on Amazon. Uh, can you give us some quick plugs for what you want people to support? And, and yes, again, they can use GiveTrack and just make a small donation. Um, but are, is there anything else? Because I know that you get a lot of random people kind of approaching you, but it's a little bit unfocused. Like what are some of the more focused things that you're worrying about in the next year or two? that maybe you can call upon the community to support you in? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I would say in addition to what you mentioned already, you know, um, making smaller donations just to, to demonstrate, you know, the platform has uh, value and, and users is, is great. And then otherwise, um, just, you know, sharing about us, talking about us. And um, we have, we try hard to, you know, put a lot of content out on social media 
Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn. Um, we do blogs, you know, we, we do our best as an NGO to put content out. So a really easy thing people can do is just share that um, and, and share their personal spin on why they think it's cool or why they're sharing it. Um, that would be really cool. Um, there's also something you can do on GiveTrack without making a, a contribution. You can just follow a project um, by clicking, there's a heart on the project page and you can just click on that and then you get to kind of experience how it works and be a part of the, the project following their updates and things without necessarily having to make a donation. Um, so that's a really fun way to still be a part of, you know, this innovative platform. Um, and you mentioned the smile program. That's also something really easy and free. Anytime you buy anything on Amazon, just use the smile uh, platform instead of just regular Amazon and they make the contribution out of their own pocket. It's 0.5% of any purchase. So they collect those funds and pull them together every quarter and just send us a, sing a single uh, check from Amazon. But that's something that's really easy and free. And I know a lot of people use Amazon, so. Um, that's awesome. Does it yeah, add up? Uh, it does, but since it's 0.5%, it's not a whole lot. You know, if we had a lot of people doing it, I think it would definitely make more of a difference. But right now it's, it's you know, not a whole lot, to be honest. Like we could probably buy some ink or ink jet, like um, printer ink, sorry, um, or something like that, but it's not a whole lot. Uh, well, I think it's also showing support. So that's really neat. Um, yeah. I guess... We're ready to wrap, I think. Uh, Josh, any other questions before we let Connie go? And Connie, if you could just give us a quick plug one more time where people can connect with you, where people can donate. Sure. Um, so we, um, we have BitGive's website, which is bitgivefoundation.org. And you can support us there and learn about the organization. And then the platform with all the different charitable projects is GiveTrack, and that's givetrack.org. And like I mentioned, you can find us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And follow us and share, share with your friends what we're up to. Um, I think... That's about it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Connie, for joining us. Uh, everybody, the Tatiana Show airs on Tuesdays and then sometimes Thursdays or another random day. Go to thetatianashow.com to check out this episode and other episodes, including Lucas's episode about what's going on specifically in the Bahamas. Uh, please support Big Give. And thank you to our sponsors. We've got Voltoro, of course, uh, Salt Lending, and our friends over at the Haven app. So really appreciate the support, everybody. Check out proofoflovecast.com if you want to get something a little bit different, a relationship, personal development show for the crypto space. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Hey there, it's time for the show. The Tatiana Show. Where you make friends and talk life and crypto. We gotta think and reflect and use lots of intellect with our hearts when we work together. I know that it can be so hard out there looking all around and saying that life ain't fair. So that is why. We will fight and stay up late at night Listening to the Tatiana Show Thank you for listening to the Tatiana Show. Please follow us on Twitter at Queen Tatiana or on Facebook and Instagram at Tatiana Moreau's Music. More episodes can be found at thetatianashow.com and make sure you leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends. The Tatiana Show has been brought to you by CryptoMediaHub.com, a boutique marketing and PR agency for Bitcoin and beyond.